Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Today's video is all about the IOD holiday release for 2024. IOD were kind enough to send me some of the products early so that I could create some projects for you guys. I've done a couple of videos. You will find a link in the description below to those videos and more from other creators. So make sure you check out that playlist. Let's get started. For my project today, I'm going to be using this hardcover book that I thrifted and I'm going to be pouring out some of my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue and mixing some water in. I'm going to be creating a open book and I've done a lot of those uh, in the past. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial, uh, probably my videos from last year would be a bit better, but this one will give you the basics. So I've just watered down the glue. I'm adding the glue over the top of the pages. I have the book open up to approximately halfway and now I'm applying the glue and water mixture over the entire book. I'm going over the sides of the pages, I'm going over the page pages where we're actually going to be adding the designs. I'm also then lifting the book up and adding the glue and water mixture to the sides of the pages, um, top and bottom. You really just want to make sure that you've got it pretty saturated. I dried that off and then I came in with some of my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue, but I didn't dilute it this time. I am applying it directly to the edges of the pages. I find that this just gives it uh, some extra hold. I'm also going to be adding it to the top and bottom sides of the pages. And this also helps with the look of age on the pages as well. So really working that glue in. I am just using a chip brush. You don't want to use your good brushes for this particular craft. I then started separating the pages and I'm using hot glue and sort of staggering the heights of the pages. That's how you get that opened book sort of trapped in time look. And now I'm taking a pencil and rolling some of the pages, uh, the corners of the pages up the top there over the top of it, adding a little bit more of that glue mixture and then adding a bit of hot glue as well. Again, this adds, adds to that aged appearance. I let that dry completely and then I came in with Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Chalk Paint. I stirred it really, really well and now I'm going over the top of the entire book. I'll also paint the cover as well. I ended up doing three coats of this just to make sure that all of that writing wasn't going to come through and obviously I'm paying particular attention to all of the pages, making sure that I'm getting it uh, onto all of the areas that you can see. I'm then going to take out IOD's new kitschy Christmas transfer. This is eight pages of absolutely adorable transfer designs. This is very retro, very vintage Christmas. You've probably had a lot of Christmas cards uh, as you were growing up with these designs on them and it is just so nostalgic and beautiful. I just think we're spoilt for choice really with these. They'd be perfect on ornaments, on any Christmas decorations really, perfect gifts, gift tags bags. Absolutely lovely. I'm definitely going to be using this one a lot in my holiday crafts. The design that really jumped out to me to start off with was this beautiful snowman. So I'm going to trim him out. I'm also cutting around some of the empty space just so I can better visualize how I'm going to be positioning my transfers. I then cut out this sweet little bunny. I do end up changing him over because the scale was a bit wrong, but I definitely wanted to have a little uh, critter down in the bottom right hand corner. I'm then going to cut out this beautiful trim here that IOD have included, this beautiful garland with the Christmas ornaments on it and I'm going to be adding those on the side. So here I'm just having a little look at the layout, placing things down so that I can figure out how I want my design to appear. I then took out IOD's new Yule Tide transfer. So this is from the new release and as you can see, it has a lot of woodland creatures in it, a very natural theme happening. You've got your cardinals, um, you have lots of holly as well. We've got some holly trim there, some Christmas trees, some Santas, some stockings. Again, this is definitely going to be a very versatile transfer to use so many images to choose from. I really wanted to use one of the Christmas trees from the Yuletide transfer, so I'm going to trim that out and I'm going to be uh, positioning that one on the right-hand page of my design. And I'm also thinking about the placement 
uh, what's going to go in front, what's going to go behind. I also loved the bells in that one as well. So again, just working out what is going to be in the foreground, what's going to be in the background. I'm then going to trim the uh, trim, the garland trim, because I want it to be a sort of corner design there. So I'm going to do that on the right and left hand corners. And I'm just working out where the design uh, on the Frosty the Snowman ends so that I can have that meet up with the festive garland. I used my phone to take a photo of the layout and then I started to remove the pieces of transfer so that I could start applying them. I'm going to be beginning with the festive garland there on the left and I'm going to peel the backing off and position it where I want it to go. And then I'm going to use the transfer stick that comes with the pack and I'm going to start rubbing and burnishing that design down. I like to go over the top of the entire design first and then I pick up the plastic and I start pulling that away as I'm rubbing and this definitely helps it to release. If you miss any spots, just pop it back down and continue rubbing. I'm then going to be adding the other design, but once I sort of put it down, I decided that I wanted to trim a little bit more of it off and sort of reposition that so that it didn't come all the way across the page. I'm then going to take the part that I cut off and put that back in place because that's where it was originally on the design. I'm just going to rub that uh, down and then it is back in place. I then decided to trim off just a little bit more of that garland. I can use that elsewhere and now it's the perfect length. So I'm going to press that down and start transferring the image. Once I remove that plastic, I do like to use my fingers to go in and gently press that design down. I'm then going to be positioning our lovely snowman on the left-hand side there. I'm then going to go over the top of the entire image with my transfer stick to get that all stuck down. Then I pick up a corner and I start rubbing and burnishing that design down until I have the whole image in place. Once the snowman is in place, I'm going to add the garland on the right hand side and just repeating the same process as before. I know it's a little bit repetitive, but my main goal really with this video is to show you how you can cut apart and arrange and layer the transfers to get a really beautiful custom look. And this is something that you could do on anything. You could be doing the same design on a sign. You could be doing this on the front of a book instead, or maybe a gift box, so many options. I then took out the same kitschy Christmas transfer again because I wanted to swap over the bunny. It felt too big. The scale wasn't right. I then sat that off to the side because we need to put the tree from the Yuletide transfer down first because I want the bunny to sit in front of it. I'm then going to start burnishing down that transfer so that it's all in place. So definitely think about the layers of your project before you start adding your transfers. You definitely want to be really conscious of what you want in the front and what you want to be in the background. Once the tree was in place, it was time to peel the backing off that sweet little bunny and press it down in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm loving the variety of scale in these beautiful transfers. It means that you can use them for a huge range of projects. I then took out these lovely bells. We're going to put those in the corners, top left and right. Now they aren't matching, but I felt like they were similar enough that they would look nice uh, in each of the corners and not be um, too odd and too different to go together. Now at this point, I probably should have sealed my project, but I got too excited and moved on to using Paint Couture's crust texture and also simply white chalk paint. I'm going to take out some of that crust and put it in a plastic container and then I'm going to tint that with the simply white chalk paint so that it looks like snow. I felt like that this would be a wonderful um, addition to this book. It would really tie the different pages together and I'm going to start adding it underneath the snowman first on the left. I'm sort of dabbing it on and sort of lifting the um, palette knife up and sort of just trying to create the look of snow and thankfully this product definitely makes it a lot easier to do this. So I'm just going to continue adding that across the left hand side 
um, adding as much as I want. If you're going to do this, obviously you could add a lot more. I just didn't want to overdo it. And then I moved on and started adding it underneath the tree on the right hand side as well. While the crust is still wet, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Sheer Frost German Glass Glitter, and I'm going to start adding that over the top to give our snow some sparkle and shine. And the product is still wet, so it will be able to um, hold on to that glitter pretty well. Uh, if you're worried about it, you could always let the crust dry and add a glue instead. I then started adding some more of that crust mixture to our Christmas tree wherever I could see that they had put some snow sitting on the branches. I went in with that crust uh, medium. I'm not going too heavy. I do still want it to be a subtle look, but again, I felt like that this was definitely going to tie the project together. If you are in Australia and you would like to get some of the amazing IOD holiday release, make sure you check out my website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Just keep in mind that these designs are a limited release, so make sure you get in quick. While the crust medium is still wet, I'm going to add some of that sheer frost German glass glitter. I also then decided to add a couple of little dabs of that crust medium on our wonderful snowman, again, trying to uh, create that sort of cohesion between the two book page designs. And then while that is still wet, again, just like before, I'm going to be adding that sheer frost German glass glitter. When the crust was dry, I took out IOD's Merry and Bright stamp set. Unfortunately, this is a retired design, but I really want the words Merry Christmas. So you could definitely use IOD's uh, apothecary stamps to spell out the words Merry Christmas instead if you don't have this one. I am taking the stamps out and then I'm going to lay them on my book itself so that I can work out the position and make sure that I'm happy with how it's going to be sitting. I then picked up the word Mary. I'm using IOD's permanent black ink and I'm going to be positioning that in the top left hand corner there and then I'm going to press it down and then I'm going to do the same thing for the word Christmas. I then took out IOD's new Vintage Snowflakes stamp. This is from the new 2024 holiday release and I'm going to be pulling the backing off because when you first get your IOD stamps, you need to season them. I'm just using some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly scuff the surface, just very lightly running that over the top one way. I'll turn it around, do it the other way and then I'm done. You never have to do this again. I'm then going to be using Paint Couture's Stardust Heavy Metal Metallic and I'm carefully and lightly brushing that over the top of one of the smaller snowflake designs and I'm going to be pressing that on the left hand side of the book and I'm also going to be adding a little bit more paint and adding the same design on the right hand side. I'm then going to select two more of the smaller snowflakes from that new stamp and repeat the same process. I just felt like this was a more subtle way to include this beautiful stamp. We've already got a lot going on with those transfers. I then took out my Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to very lightly paint some of that on the words Merry Christmas. I'm going to go back over the top of the stamp design just to give the letters a bit more of a sort of sparkle and shine. I let that dry and then I sealed the entire project with a spray gloss sealer. I'm then going to use Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Antiquing Glaze. I don't want this to be too dark. We're not going for a grungy look, so I'm wiping back a lot and just working in sections. As I said, I did seal this with a spray sealer, so that sealed in all the glitter, and it's also allowing me to wipe back a lot of that glaze. I just really want some definition on the book pages, just a little bit of wear. Again, I don't want it grungy, but I do want it to have that vintage and worn look, so I'm going very, very light and making sure that I don't overdo it. I then added a little bit to the center part of the book and I'm going to dab a little bit of the glaze on the background of the rest of the pages but again very light very subtle. When that was dry, I started applying some of the Bronze Lux Metallic just to the page edges. I wanted it to look like they had the gilded uh, 
edges of the paper. And again, not going in too heavy. I'm just going to sort of build that up. I want it to be noticeable, but again, still look worn, still look like someone has been reading this book. And I'm also going to be sure to wipe it off from the hardcover of the book so that it does look like it's just on the book pages. I then dipped the other end of my paintbrush in the bronze and I'm just going to dab on a few little um, spots of that bronze to tie the Christmas tree in with the bronze on the book pages. Finally, I'm going to use some hot glue to attach a red velvet ribbon for a placeholder to go down the center. And here's a look at our vintage style Christmas book. I love how this turned out. The new IOD holiday release transfers are stunning and they go perfectly with the new vintage snowflake stamp. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. Remember to check out the other videos in the IOD holiday released playlist. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.